Welcome to Juniper Learning Bytes. My name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer uh, within education services within Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the Contra adding a vRouter learning byte. Alright, so you may be asking yourself at this point, what is a vRouter in Contra? And that's a great question, especially if you're new to Contra. Well, the thing to keep in mind about vRouters is first, V routers are housed in the compute nodes. Now there are a couple different nodes, node types within Contrail, and those types are config, analytics, control, and compute. And uh, just suffice to say that the config is the orchestrator, the analytics is the analytics engine, collects data, things like that. Control handles the control functions, and the compute houses the vRouter which does the forwarding functions and so there's one vRouter per compute node and then also the compute node houses the VM instances whenever you deploy a VM instance that's housed in the actual compute node itself and then we do extend the physical network to the virtual overlay network using the vRouters won't get into too much detail about that now because that's not really the point of this learning byte. We're more looking at expanding our scale with uh, adding vRouters in Contrail. But just note that the vRouters is the forwarding plane and it does provide that layer 2 and layer 3 services for Contrail. And then one other thing to point out is any VM instances that are deployed connect into that vRouter. And oh, one other thing is that vRouter and compute node are very synonymous as far as terminology goes. You'll see that in the documentation and in the GUIs and we'll point that out as we go along because we'll look at the GUI and we'll see that. Let's talk about how we add vRouters. The first thing you need to do is on the config node itself we need to update the testbed.py file with the new vRouter information and we'll go through how to do that and that's under the op control utilities fab file testbeds directory and then it's the testbed.py file. Now be very careful not to make syntax mistakes. It's easy to do, it's very finicky, but just look at other entries to see the actual syntax and what you need to do. And then to add a new vRouter, the first thing you need to do is on the new node you need to install the necessary control packages. And then you need to do the initial setup for the new node. And this means the host name, and the like the management interface things like that so you need to make sure you do that on the new node first and then on the config node you need to navigate to the op control utils directory and then run the fabric command the add underscore v router underscore node colon root and then the compute node uh, management IP address you have to run that and that'll run the necessary scripts to set up the new v router uh, one other thing to point out is this fabric command, this ffab, which is a fabric command, has to be ran from that directory, from the op control utils directory. You can't run it from a different directory and specify that the op control utils directory. It won't work. So make sure you navigate to that directory first. So let's jump to the GUI and look at a few things first. Here we have, we'll look at the top up here where I'm pointing with the mouse. We can see that we have a couple things. We have vRouters, control nodes, analytics nodes, and config nodes, and the number of each that we have. Notice how these are called out by nodes, but over here it shows vRouters. Now that's a spot where vRouters and compute nodes are interchangeable, very similar as far as uh, terminology goes. Just keep that in mind. Because here we show the resources. We show the compute-1 and compute-2. Those are those host names and we show that the actual resource usage this is the resource usage of the compute nodes not the vRouters because the vRouters don't have resource usage it's, or resources it's actually the compute nodes and then the vRouters use the resources of the compute nodes so just keep that in mind it's a very important point point. and then also to point out here we're using version 1.03 with Contrail and then something else to look at we can see we have 250 instances here this is VM instances this may not be a lot but this may be a threshold that we say hey we're going to start running out of resources on our compute nodes. We need to add a new compute node or vRouter. So that's the reason behind this learning byte to show you how to do that. So let's jump to the CLI. All right, so this is the CLI of the config node. First thing we need to do is we need to edit 
that testbed file. So that's op, control, utils, fab file, testbed, and testbed.py. And so going in here, we first need to add the management IP address and specify which host. This guy's going to be host 6 and root at the actual management IP address. 235 is what that's going to be. It's whatever you set up previously. Then we have to define the roles. We're going to have host 6. We're going to define because we defined host 6 previously. So we're going to reference host 6 here under the all role. And then we're going to go down to the compute role and reference host 6 as well. And notice how it says compute, not vRouter. Another instance of how vRouter and compute are, are synonymous as far as uh, terminology here. And then under the environment host name, we have to set up host 6. And then we tell it the host name that we configured previously. This is something you set up previously before we even did this. And it's going to be compute-3. And then we have to specify the actual admin password for this is going to be the uh, the actual root password for the host six environment. Which is going to be root one two three. And then we have to set up the actual OS that we're using for that node, and it's just going to be sent OS. And that's all we need to do. And then we need to navigate to the op control utils directory and then run that fabric command. Remember we have to be in this directory to do that. So fab add underscore v router underscore node colon root at then we have to reference the actual management address. And now it's running the actual scripts to set up the v router and connect it to the cluster. So I'm going to pause the recording, pause the video while this goes on, because this takes about five minutes to do. And then I'll start up the recording after the scripts are all done and everything's up and running. All right, looks like that script is done. And so we see that it uh, finished, disconnected from that node. So everything looks good, there are no errors. So we'll jump back to the GUI. We can see here we actually have a third vRouter present now. Now that's good, that's what we want to see. We can scroll or highlight this, the vRouter or the compute node in the bubble chart. We can see the, the statistics there, as well as the statistics of the other compute nodes here. And notice something interesting is that these compute nodes are green and this one is blue. And the reason behind that is these compute nodes have VM instances associated with them, whereas this compute node does not. And that's just because it's a brand new compute node, and that's, that's great and all. That's exactly what we'd want to see. Well, let's really test this out. Let's jump to the OpenStack user interface and launch a virtual machine. Uh, it's all set up, ready to go. And when we launch this, we should see it show up on the new compute node, uh, compute 3. And it'll be associated with that new vRouter. And so that'll take just a minute. You see that it uh, first goes into a scheduling, then a spawning state. And that's what we want to see. We can see that under the task section here. And that'll take just a minute to reach the active state. All right, we can see now that's reached the active state, and that's what we want to see. Now the next question is, which compute node did that end up on? It should be the new compute node. We can check that out real quick through the, uh, the OpenStack GUI. Since we're here, we can do that. We just go to the Admin tab and then the Instances tab, and we can see that it, that it landed on compute node 3 exactly what we wanted to see and that's good because there's an internal algorithm that when it deploys a VM if you don't specify the compute node it's going to select the compute node with the least amount of resources used and here the new compute node definitely has the least amount of resources this is it didn't have any virtual machines on it before now it does so we can jump back to here let's refresh this page and we can see that we have green on all three, one, two, and three. And that's because they each have virtual machines associated with it. And that brings us to the end of this learning byte. And in this learning byte, we talked about adding a vRouter in Contrail, discussed what vRouters were, and the steps to add a vRouter. And then we walked through the process of actually adding a new vRouter by adding, setting up the compute node and things like that, and, and running the scripts from the config node. And so I really hope that this, this learning byte will be helpful to you in your daily work. 
And as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.